Hi, I'm Ed Bruce, trucking through the Crescent City. One of the most colorful, energetic, fascinating cities in the world. There's only one big easy, New Orleans, Louisiana, where celebration is a way of life. I'm a little early for the annual Mardi Gras festival, but I'm right on time for another annual celebration. It's being held this year in the facility behind me, New Orleans' beautiful Rivergate Convention Center. It's the ISCA Magna Auto Show's grand finale. The grand finale is the premier event of the ISCA Magna Show circuit. 50 of the top customized show vehicles from this past year, including the nation's finest show trucks, have earned the right to compete in this special invitational meet. We'll take a close-up look at each one. And then we'll find out which one is the show truck of the year. Let's take a look at the first finalist in this year's ISCA Magna show truck competition, this beautiful 1985 GMC pickup. We all know that show trucks are real works of art. Here's one where that expression truly applies. David Okowit of East Lansing, Michigan has created a stunning masterpiece he calls Low Tide. It's David's vision of the ultimate California beach truck. The realistic water splash effect was created with three different shades of blue, each fogged on top of one another. Artist Tim Hunt of Auto Art also added gray shadows and white highlights to make this 3D paint job really stand out. The painted water effect carries through the door jam and onto the bottom of the dash. The interior is completely customized with handmade oak console and Recaro bucket seats. When not set up for display, low tide stands only one and a half inches off the ground. No wonder it gets so wet on the beach. One of the most interesting things about this truck is that David decided to build this project quite literally by accident. I was driving alone late at night and all of a sudden this eight-point buck jumped out in front of me. I couldn't miss him. I totaled the truck, had to take it home and tell him all about it. He took it to the shop and while it was there, decided to do a few modifications, a louvered hood, you know, lower it a little bit. Kept telling me that's all, that's all. And then uh, it snowballed and one thing led to another and a little over two years later it came out looking like it does. David is especially proud of his engine. It's a 350 board 30 over that's been balanced and blueprinted. The block, heads, and transmission housing have all been ground smooth, feather filled, and painted to complement the body. All in all, I'd say this is one truck sure to make a splash in any competition. Stay with us. We'll be right back with more from the ISCA Magna Grand Finale, right here on Truck in USA. One of the finest architectural settings in the United States is New Orleans French Quarter. Also known as Vucare by the locals, which means Old Square, the French Quarter is still the heart of this great city. The past couple of days, I've been enjoying the magnificent beauty of New Orleans. Today, the magnificent beauty here at the ISCA Magna Grand Finale. Take a look at this one-of-a-kind rear-engine 1980 Dodge pickup. It's got everybody talking. 59-year-old Nick Gutnick of Las Vegas, Nevada, took the engine and drivetrain out of a 1973 Tornado. He twin-turbocharged it and then dropped it in the back of his 1980 Dodge. When Nick originally built this truck, he had a different type of competition in mind. We have a lot of kids with uh, trucks that think they're really pretty fast. And I built this as a toy to uh, show them what a fast truck is all about. Nick's creation puts out twice the torque of a Corvette ZR1 and weighs 1,000 pounds less. But before he ever made it to the drag strip, he decided to chrome a few parts. And before he knew it, he had a show truck. Nick's engineering background is certainly evident in this truck. Up front, the suspension points had to be separated nine inches to match the wider new rear end. Nick liked the lines of the Dodge, but he wanted a short bed. So he shortened the wheelbase by seven inches and took 16 inches out of the bed. All the box sections were welded, and he then added a stainless steel liner. The exterior is painted in a creamy white pearl with ghost flames on the door. And the cab interior has a very contemporary look by Denny Nash of Las Vegas. Nick told me one of the reasons he likes the show circuit so much is because of all the new friends he's made. One of them is also a finalist for show truck of the year. He's the owner of this classic 56 Ford, Gary Griswold of Chico, California. 
In only his first year on the show circuit, Gary has earned a place in this grand finale because of his determination to make this 56 Ford a champion show truck. Gary stripped the truck down to the frame, which he boxed and filled. He used a Chevelle front end and a Jaguar rear end. The engine is a big 351 Cleveland that has been ground and smooth, and as you can see, it sports a lot of gleaming chrome. Gary estimates he has a good $10,000 of chrome work invested in this truck. Outside, all the seams have been filled and smooth, and likewise, the inside of the bed has been made to match by removing all rivets for a fluid line. He painted the truck black with very subtle purple graphics that highlight the real beauty and classic lines of this 56 pickup. For Gary, most of the fun of showing his special creation are all the new friends he's made this past year. We were new on the circuit this year and didn't know what to expect. Uh, at Oakland, we met Nick Goodnick, who uh, became a good friend and gave us a lot of advice and uh, showed us the ropes. Uh, Gary and I would set our displays up next to each other very often, and uh, Gary would stop by and ask for some uh, advice, and uh, we'd give him some pointers. After each show, we'd go home and make, to be competitive, go home and make modifications. Many of the modifications were made on the advice of Nick. Matter of fact, during the season, the truck's been apart three times. I was ahead of Gary uh, for most of the year, and uh, apparently the advice worked, because Gary passed me the last couple shows in points, and uh, he beat. He won the Pacific Division. Here's another finalist for show truck of the year. It's an 85 Nissan owned by Mark Bonham of Stockton, California. Those longtime faithful viewers of Truck in USA may recognize this truck. It's Mark's second invitation to the grand finale. The outstanding feature of the truck still remains Mark's love of chrome. He does work at a chrome plating shop. But that's old news. Since we've last seen this truck, Mark has added a 671 blower to the engine, along with chrome firewall and fender walls. He's also detailed the truck with lots of brass hardware and other ways that should gain him points. All these improvements could mean the difference this year. Jazz clubs, honky tonks, country music clubs, discos, you name it, and you'll probably find it right here along New Orleans' world-famous Bourbon Street. And today it's cool jazz and hot trucks, like this radical 1956 Ford owned by Troy and Barbara Willoughby of Midwest City, Oklahoma. Troy chopped the top three inches to get a sleeker line, and there are a number of other outstanding features to note on this truck, like the use of gold and chrome plating. Now, most show trucks use predominantly chrome with gold trim. Troy's invested a little extra money in this truck and decided to use gold plate with chrome trim for a different look. The chassis is completely hand fabricated from a Ford frame with custom made cross members and a 1970 Oldsmobile front clip. The interior cab, a two-tone gray velour, also has its share of gold too, highlighted by this high-tech digital dash panel. The paint job is a classic look for a 50s hot rod. Electric carrot red with pearl metallic and, of course, stylized flames and pinstripes. And under the hood, an engine to match the look. A shiny blown 350 with side draft Makuni carbs. Troy is going all out in his quest for Truck of the Year honors. In fact, prior to this show, he tore this vehicle down to the frame and completely rebuilt it. A lot of judges couldn't believe the, uh, the work that we had done between the shows and uh, New paint job, new flame, new interior. We tilted the bed, we put uh, a lot of chrome, a lot of gold underneath it, just for this one car show. Well, I don't envy the judges one bit. We do have one more truck to show you. Here's another finalist in our Truck of the Year competition, Ronald Blakely's 55 F100. The Predator is a veteran of the ISCA Magna Auto Show circuit. And at first glance, this truck may look the same as it did in last year's competition. But Ron has refined some details that he hopes will earn him the championship. He has added billeted aluminum knockoff wheels for a racy look. He also blackened out the chrome door handles and added gold detailing here and there. The bumper bolts have been shaved and the bumper moved back and elevated for a cleaner floating look. But the most dramatic differences are under the hood. All the heater hoses and most of the wiring is now hidden in the newly boxed in frame and the entire engine has been ground and polished for a cleaner, smoother look. Predator was tough competition in the past, but with these improvements, it moved up to win the Central Division Truck Sweepstakes, so watch out. The Predator has been uncaged. Well, there you have it. You've seen all of the finalists for Truck of the Year. Which one did you pick? We won't have to wait much longer. The judges will announce their decision right after we come back on Truck in USA. The mighty Mississippi River, leading down to the Delta and the Gulf of Mexico. 
primary waterway and source of commerce for early New Orleans trade. It now serves as the backdrop for the city's new World Trade Plaza and the Riverwalk featuring over 200 specialty shops. Well, the wait's over. It's time to announce this year's ISCA Magna Auto Show Show Truck of the Year. And the envelope, please. And the winner is Gary Griswold's 1956 F100 Show Truck. Congratulations, Gary. And congratulations to all our finalists.